You're listening to Brains On from NPR News and Southern California Public Radio. We're serious about being curious. I'm Molly Bloom. <coughs> What's that, Fido? <coughs> Whiskers, you too? <coughs> ooh, ooh, wait, wait, one at a time. One at a time. I have, I have literally no idea what you're trying to tell me. Just, just chill, okay? Thank you. Do you ever wonder what your cat or dog is saying to you? Well, today we have a slew of mystery sounds that will help us learn more about the communication of our feline and canine friends. We spoke to two scientists who study this. Sarah Ellis is a feline behavior specialist and visiting fellow at the University of Lincoln. Hello. Tomasz Faragu studies canine vocalizations at the Family Dog Project in Budapest. Hello. We're going to hear from them right now, and if you listen carefully to what they're going to say, you'll hear some hints for the upcoming mystery sounds. We'll start with our cat expert, Sarah. They make up quite a lot of different vocalizations, actually. And people tend to categorize those into three different areas. There's the vocalizations that cats make when they keep their mouth closed. And examples of those would be the purr and the chirrup. And they make a group of sounds that happen with the mouth held open. And that would be the spit and the hiss. And the other sounds they do is when the mouth is opening and closing, and that's a meow. What they communicate to us might be quite different from what they communicate to each other. The meow, for example, um, kittens will meow to their mothers, and that's likely to be a, a contact call. But we don't tend to hear cats meow to one another. Um, in our domesticated pet cats, they tend to meow to us but not to other feline housemates. They'll meow in a whole variety of different contexts, including when they want food, when they're stuck behind a door and they want in or when they want out, and even just when they want attention from us. It's something that they have the ability to do naturally. They don't have to learn to meow. It's it's there right from the beginning. But it's very likely that it's shaped by us and that they may be responding to our behaviours and to us so learning about, through our reinforcement, what certain meow works with that particular owner to get what they want. But spitting, hissing and screeching are defensive sounds. Cats have evolved from a solitary ancestor. Although cats nowadays can live in groups under the right kind of circumstances, they still rely solely on themselves for their survival. To, to get involved in a, in a fight with aggression where you could be um, wounded is really quite dangerous because you've got nobody to help you recover from that. You rely solely on yourself. So cats will use a lot of that kind of noisy vocalization to make themselves appear bigger, stronger, to scare off that other cat. So they'll use everything they can before actual tooth and claw. And there are a few different types of purrs. Purring is very much a big vocalization that they'll also use to communicate their contentment with us. They've discovered another kind of purr, which they call the solicitation purr. And that's a purr that occurs when the cat wants something. Primarily, it's usually food. Third context in which the cat purr occurs, and that's the context that is negative. There's been lots of anecdotal reports that cats actually will purr when they're in intense pain. And this is really interesting because we've always thought of purring as a a positive indicator. And now we potentially have this third area where cats purr that might be negative. Now some hints from Tomash, our expert on dog vocalizations. Some types of vocalizations can be linked with different situations or emotional states. Growls are mostly used in, in aggression, so in competition with others or territorial or dominance interactions with other dogs. They use a special type of growl in play. So when they, they play tug of war with the owner or, or playing with other dogs, they also use the growl. So they are higher pitched and, and shorter. They are more pulsing uh, than the aggressive growls. Barking is, is really special a vocalization in dogs because wolves rarely bark. And uh, we know dogs bark all the time. This is the most typical vocalization of dogs. They bark differently in in different emotional states. So when they are left alone, they bark high-pitched and tonal. So these these barks are more clean-sounding. But when there is an intruder at the fence or or at the door, they bark deeper and they bark harsher. There are different types of barks 
also, for example, playful bars are also higher pitched, but the the rhythm is different from from the alone bars. In general, people can tell. So we played back bars recorded from different contexts, and they had to try to figure out from which context the bars was recorded. They were surprisingly successful, even those that were not experienced with dogs at all. Will you be successful in decoding these mystery sounds? Well, of course, you'll do well, Fido. But we'll see how the rest of us do in a minute. But first, do you have any mystery sounds you want to share with us? How about questions you want to hear answered on the show? Or maybe you want to send us a drawing or a digital high five? Email us. We're at brainson at m as in Minnesota, PR dot org. Or if you'd like to send us an actual letter in the actual mail, you can find our mailing address at our website, brainson.org. We'd love if you tell us about your pet and the stuff you think it says to you. Maybe draw a comic. While you're on our website, you can also sign up for our newsletter. We'll let you know about new episodes, events, and other fun stuff. Now it's time to announce the latest group of kids to be added to the Brains Honor Roll. These are the awesome kids who keep the show going with their inquisitive ideas, creative questions, and marvelous mystery sounds. Here they are. Ben from Los Angeles, Tyler from Singapore, Hannah from Tacoma Park, Maryland, Maura from Easley, South Carolina, Nolan and Logan from Fremont, California, Zachary from Hudson, Wisconsin, Neva and Lucy from Fullerton, California, Evan and April from Redondo Beach, California, Eli and Miles from Seattle, Jack from Corsicana, Texas, Henry from Vancouver, Julia May from Walkerton, Indiana, Eddie from Concord, North Carolina, Elon from Portland, Oregon, Edie from Cambridge, Massachusetts, Matthew from Peter Maritzburg, South Africa, Lucy from Calgary, Kai and Lacey from Grand Desert, Nova Scotia, Gabrielle from Concord, Massachusetts, Leaf from Chico, California, Audrey from Brooklyn, Auden and Maggie from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Vivian from Boston, Macy and Jamie from Lake Orion, Michigan, Stella from Richmond, Virginia, Ivan from Silver Spring, Maryland, Imogen and Matthew from Auckland, New Zealand, Morgan from Santa Rosa, California, Petra and Julian from Orem, Utah, Kelly from Verona, New Jersey, Enid from Lake Oswego, Oregon, and Kaya from Mountain View, California. Are you all ready for the mystery sounds? This round of Mystery Sounds was recorded live at the Fitzgerald Theatre in St. Paul as part of our Cats vs. Dog show. Mark, Sandin, and I are presenting the Mystery Sounds, and you'll hear some guesses from the audience. We hope you'll guess along. So we're going to play a little game, and we need your help. If you're a fan of Brains On, you know we like to do a segment called the Mystery Sound. That's when we play a sound, and we have people kind of guess what it is. It's one of our most popular segments. And today, we're going to try something like that live. So since we're doing a show on cats and dogs, we're going to play cat and dog noises. And your job is to tell us what you think the cat or dog is saying. Are they mad or happy? Are they asking for playtime or asking for food? And after your guesses, we'll tell you the answer. So y'all ready? We're going to start with two different barks. One is friendly and one is not. So listen for the difference. We want you to tell us if bark one or bark two is the friendly bark. So here is bark one. Okay, here is bark two. Okay, which is friendlier, bark one or bark two? Who has a guess? Bark one. Bark one, another guess over here, Sam? Bark one. Bark one, we both think bark one. Okay, let's hear the answer, Sam, and which one was it? Okay, so the first bark was a dog barking at a stranger, not that friendly. It was the second dog barking, asking for a ball. Let's hear that again. the second one again? So can you picture it? I'm holding a ball. He's like, come on, come on. (laughs) (laughs) So barks are pretty cool because they're really unique to domestic dogs. Wolves do bark sometimes, but usually it's kind of a back off type of thing, but they're known more for their howls. Dogs, on the other hand, they have all kinds of ways to bark, and they bark to both communicate with each other and communicate with us. And researchers have found that humans are actually pretty good at guessing what different barks mean, even though we may have not gotten it right today. Usually you can tell if your dog is barking to say, hey, I want to play, or hey, get away from me, which is good because, you know, it allows them to communicate with us through these barks. Okay, let's move on to the next sound. We have two cat sounds. One is a cat who wants food. And one is a cat who is stuck behind the door. 
So which one is the cat who is stuck behind the door? Here is cat number one. Okay. Food or door? I don't know. Here's cat number two. Okay. Which one was stuck behind the door? Cat number one or cat number two? You have a guess over here with Sam? One or two. Two. Cat number two. Good guess. Over here with Tiffany? One. Cat number one. Over here with Sam? One or two? One. Cat one. Okay. Oh, one more guess over here with Tiffany? Cat number two. Cat number two, and you have cat ears on. Very nice. Okay, so the answer, the cat behind the door was cat number two. Let's hear that again. <laughs> so unlike dogs, we can tell what kind of sounds dogs are making. Research shows that we are terrible at telling what sounds cats are making. Even owners, when played their own cat's noises, can't really tell if they're happy or sad. So cat owners really tell a lot what's going on through context, like what the body language is, what's happening. And cats actually only use meows to communicate with humans. They don't use it with other cats. When they're kittens, they use it to talk to their moms. But then when they're grown up, it's only for us. So ready for the next sound? This is a dog sound. We're going to ask if it's an angry dog or a happy dog. Angry dog or happy dog? Who has a guess? I heard angry dog out there. Look over here with Sam. Angry. Who else has a guess over here with Sam? I thought it was happy. You thought it was happy. Excellent. And the other, oh, back here with Tiffany. Angry. Angry. Over here with Sam. Happy. Happy. Okay, so, oh, one more with Tiffany. Angry. Angry dog. All right. So that dog was actually the sound of a dog playing. Let's hear it one more time. <laughs> So it sounds, it sounds like the dog is growling, and it is, but you can tell that the dog is actually happy and playing because of, there are a couple of things. One is that the growls are a little bit higher pitched than a, a low, deep, angry growl. And the other one, it's kind of punctuated with sharp little other happy noises, little barks. If, uh, if a dog were mad, it would be a lot lower. It would be a low growl, deep growl. That was a happy growl. All right, we have one more sound for you. This is a cat sound. And we don't have a choice for you this time. We want you to tell us what the cat is saying. So we want you to be its translator. OK? <laughs> OK, who, has, who wants to tell us what that cat is saying? Over here with Sam. Oh, so many hands. It's purring and it's happy. It's happy. It's saying, I'm happy. OK, over here with Tiffany. For what it's saying? Me? Yeah, what is the cat saying? <laughs> Get away. Get away. <laughs> yeah, over here with Sam. Be quiet. Be I'm quiet. trying to sleep. <laughs> Excellent. Most likely. Over here with <laughs> Tiffany. Um, get away. Get away. We think this is not a happy sound. Back there with Sam. I think it was get away from me. OK, we, hear, we think this cat is not happy. I think it wants food. Oh. Mm. Well, our last guesser is correct. That cat <laughs> wants food. Let's hear it one more time. Yeah. So this is what's known as a solicitation purr. Now, we know cats purr for lots of reasons, and scientists are just starting to figure out what some of them mean, as we talked about before. But this one kind of means, hey, pay attention to me right now. Give me something. Notice me. I'm a cat. I'm great. All that stuff. You can tell it's kind of urgent. It has sort of a high-pitched sound to it that's almost a little bit like maybe a baby crying or something. And scientists think cats have figured out that we respond really well to this kind of high-pitched sound, and they basically used it to train us to do stuff, to notice them and give them foods and stuff. So um, other cat purrs we know are you know, things they do when they're happy. And as uh, we mentioned before, sometimes cats even purr when they're wounded uh, or in distress. So there's a lot of research to be done about the cat purrs. Hopefully you all become cat scientists and can uh, tell us about those purrs one day. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks for guessing. You. Good guesses.
That's it for this episode of Brains On. Sorry, guys, but you'll get more soon when we post our next episode. For now, thanks to all the people who made us sound good on stage, Johnny Vince Evans, Tom Campbell, Alan Frechtman, Tiffany Hansen, and Sam Chu. We'll be back with more answers to your questions soon. Thanks for listening. Brains on.